Brooklyn, New York. A landscaper named Daniel faced a challenge. His client, Diana, couldn't enjoy the backyard. Diana relies on a motorized wheelchair to get around outdoors. Whatever changes I was making in the back were sort of falling flat because she couldn't access it. It was bumpy. There were drop-offs and ledges. There were clumps of grass and weeds. And every time it rained, it would get super muddy. So she'd be literally stuck. Daniel liked the look and price point of gravel. So he asked Washington Rock, how could he make gravel wheelchair accessible? So we developed accessibility guidelines that anyone could use and created a plan for Diana's yard. Then we traveled to Brooklyn and teamed up with Northeast Materials Group to put our guidelines to the test. This is the Washington Rock Show, how we made gravel wheelchair accessible in Brooklyn. We needed a foolproof plan for this project. We started this project by researching accessibility standards with the help of a landscape architect. There's a lot of information to sort through, so we created eight basic guidelines, which are available with detailed illustrations on our blog. The first guideline is to choose between two construction methods. We chose the light method, which requires excavating three inches of material and backfilling with three inches of gravel, ideally quarter inch minus. With our method selected, we made a scaled model of Diana's yard and worked with Daniel to create some wheelchair-friendly designs. Based on the design and the construction method we chose, we needed a little over five cubic yards of gravel. By the way, if you need help figuring out how much material your project needs, check out our YouTube video, How Many Cubic Yards Do You Need? Getting gravel through a five-foot wide alley was a challenge. We teamed up with our sister company, Northeast Materials Group in Vermont, to deliver gravel in 50-pound bags. Even though the guidelines call for quarter-inch minus gravel, we used half-inch minus because it's easier to source and less expensive. But that comes with the risk that larger pieces of gravel might get loose and get in the way of some wheelchairs. We decided to take the risk, but you may not want to. Our final challenge was finding a piece of excavating equipment that could squeeze through the narrow alley. Turns out, a Bobcat S70 skid steer fit the bill. We also used a 200-pound plate tamper, rakes, marking chalk, a measuring tape, a wheelbarrow, a hand tamper, square point shovels, a hose with a spray attachment, and a pressure washer for finishing touches, just in case you were wondering. Crew members were also a must. The plan, equipment, and crew came together on a spring day to flip Diana's yard. We started by marking, measuring, and excavating the project area. Then we compacted and cleaned up the excavated area. We brought in the bags, all 210 of them, and filled in the design. The final step was to lightly spray down the gravel and compact it. We repeated the final step several times until the gravel remained firm underfoot. We made a few finishing touches before the big reveal. The day came for Diana to see the new yard, and more importantly, to test the gravel. No more mud on my wheels, stuck in my wheels. I, I couldn't believe it. It was it's so changed. I could get around easily. The design here, where we have the, the green stuff here. And I can look at my boxes of, of vegetables and fruit and get to them. Pick, things to eat, I was blown away. <laughs> oh, well, this is so exciting. And when I see the results, access and the way things have been designed, it's just beautiful. If someone who's disabled can see this, they might adapt what's needed, that I needed, for their own purposes. And that will help people 
have a, a more enriched life. Wow, this is fantastic. Gravel was just one part of the transformation. Daniel added plants, installed artwork, and used reclaimed boulders and concrete to add character to the yard. This is my style of gardening, to use found materials, on-site materials, natural materials, stuff that, that's just sitting there for the taking and is so beautiful. The gravel from Northeast Materials is made from crushing reclaimed granite blocks, so it's right at home with Daniel's resourceful approach. As it turns out, accessibility can be beautiful. I really feel like we accomplished the accessibility and the preparation of the new beds, and then some by far. I really feel like I could actually walk away from this project having done everything I wanted to do. But the exciting part is that now we've got new planting beds and, and more to come, but we don't need to turn the whole place upside down ever again because it is good to go.